Hello and welcome back to Good Nightmare, a podcast where strange and unusual is exactly what we're looking for. Today's episode is a very highly recommended one by my friend Abby, also known as Promote the Pods or Dumb Ravioli on Twitter. I'm assuming a lot of you follow her and if you don't, you probably should. Just a heads up, I do have Maud with me today. For those of you who don't know, that is my cat and he is quite vocal, so you may hear him in the background. In the spring of 1943, on April 18, four young boys from Worcestershire, England, were exploring Hagley Woods, located in the estate of Hagley Hall. The boys were spending their day together, poaching on the estate that belonged to Lord Cobham, but they found much more than they bargained for when Bob Farmer, one of the boys, climbed a large witch elm to look for birds' nests. He glanced down into the hollow of the tree and found what he first thought was an animal skull, before noticing human teeth and hair still attached. Spooked, he and his friends Robert Hard, Thomas Willits and Fred Payne left the skull where they had found it and fled. The boys agreed not to tell anyone about their discovery since they were on the estate illegally. However, being shaken by the event, the youngest of the four, Thomas Willits, confessed to his parents about what they had found. Before we get too far into this episode, I want to offer you 15% off at Studio Sweden with the code GOODNIGHTMARE15. I've been using the Vazablai earphones for about a month now, and they are fantastic. They have a full eight hours of unlimited playtime with a unique standby mode for up to 10 days of battery life. Remember to use Good Nightmare 15 on checkout for 15% off and I will put the link in the show notes. Police were engaged to investigate the boy's finding. Upon inspection, they discovered an almost complete skeleton, along with a shoe, a wedding ring and clothing fragments. The skull was mostly intact, but the body not so much. The remains of a human hand were found at a distance from the tree. There was hope that the identity or at least some details of who this person was, may be determined due to the intact dental pattern and the remaining human hair on the skull. The remains were sent for forensic examination by Professor James Webster. It was determined that the body was that of a woman who had been dead for at least 18 months, concluding that time of death was sometime around or before October 1941, It is suggested, though I couldn't confirm, that Bella may also have been a mother. There was a scrap of taffeta found in Bella's mouth that suggested that she may have been suffocated. The body itself was found in a trunk, and it was determined that the woman was placed in the trunk either while still alive or sometime before rigor mortis set in, as she would not have fit otherwise. Rigor mortis is the third stage of death in which the body stiffens. In humans, this can occur within four hours of death. Police were able to determine what the woman may have looked like and attempted to compare her details to the records of several missing persons reports from the time of her death. Unfortunately, none of the records seemed to match the evidence. Her dental records were also sent to dentists, but again, there was no match. In 1944, a message was written on a wall in Upper Dean Street in Birmingham, reading, Who Put Bella Down the Witch Elm? Other similar messages, supposedly in the same hand, appeared in the years following. In the 1970s, the slightly different message, Who Put Bella in the Witch Elm, spelt W-I-T-C-H, was written on the Hagley Obelisk near the woman's resting place. To this day, the case remains unsolved. Before we get into the theories, I just want to remind you again that I have an offer for you for 15% off your purchase at Studio Sweden with the code GOODNIGHTMARE15. I've been using the Vasa headphones and they are so light and comfortable, sometimes I forget that I'm wearing anything at all. I went with the rose gold pattern because although I love dark topics, I adore bright colors and we could all use a little bit of color in our life. These headphones are subtle and stylish and will go with any look. That's Good Nightmare 15 for 15% off and the link is in the show notes. 
There are multiple theories regarding who Bella might be and how she may have come to meet her demise. In 1944, a possible victim was reported to police. The woman was described as a prostitute named Bella, who had worked on Hagley Road. Bella had disappeared three years earlier. The graffiti artist using the name Bella in their writing suggested they may have been aware of the woman's identity. Could this have been a case of murder at the hands of men who frequented this road? In 1953, Una Mossop came forward with a statement. She claimed that her ex-husband Jack had been told by a man named Van Rolt that he had been the one who put Bella in the tree. Van Rolt claimed that he had been with a woman that night who had passed out drunk while they were driving. He claimed he'd put Bella in a hollowed-out tree so that when she awoke she'd be frightened of what had become of her and would learn her lesson not to go drinking with men. Jack Mossop ended up living the remainder of his life in an institution as he had recurring nightmares of a woman staring out at him from a tree. He passed away there and it was 10 years before his wife would come forward with her statement. The statement's validity was questioned because of the amount of time it took to come to light. It also begs the question that if this was a poorly thought out prank or lesson, why was the body then found in a trunk? Who stuffed taffeta down Bella's throat and why had her hand been severed? There have been two further theories that Bella was a spy who was caught and murdered However, one of these theories that named her as Clara was dismissed as it was determined that Clara had in fact died in Berlin on December 16, 1942. She was a known spy. The other theory was that Bella was actually Clara Bella Dronkers, killed by a German circle of spies for, quote, knowing too much. While this theory is both ominous and intriguing, there's no evidence to support it. In 1945, anthropologist Margaret Murray proposed that Bella's murder was a ritual killing involving witchcraft. She suggested that the ritual was known as the Hand of Glory, in which the left hand of a person who has killed or committed a serious crime is severed from their body, the left hand often being symbolically connected with evil or Satanism throughout history. This, however, would imply that Bella herself was a murderess, or perhaps someone equally as evil as the people who killed her. As for whether we'll ever have answers, unless DNA was somehow extracted before the skull suddenly disappeared, it's unlikely that we ever will. Bella's skull went missing, or was lost, by Birmingham police. While there have been multiple searches into the documentation and possible location of the skull, it still has not been found. You might think this is an impossible situation, but this isn't the first time a person's organs, bones or documents have gone missing in a case still under investigation. This might be something that I'll look into on the podcast at a later date. So the theory now is that unless someone happens to stumble across a photograph resembling Bella's sketch, it's unlikely the woman's true identity will ever come to light. The thought of disappearing in history so completely seems impossible in the modern age, with the paper and electronic trails that we leave behind. Tell me what theory you believe fits this case, or do you have one of your own? Was Bella a spy, or just someone simply unlucky enough to come across the wrong man at the wrong time. You can catch me on Instagram or Twitter at goodnightmare underscore s, on Facebook at goodnightmarepod, or via email on goodnightmare underscore s at outlook.com. As always, thank you so much for listening. Please rate, review and subscribe to hear more and to help my podcast grow. Hang in there for a promo from another fantastic podcast that I hope you will go and listen to now. Sweet dreams. Hi, I'm Lainey, host of the True Crime Fan Club podcast. If you're a true crime addict like I am, then my show is for you. I'll peel back the curtain and give you a glimpse into the life and crimes of some of the most demented minds. Check out the episode Broken Bonds and listen to a brother reveal a deeply held secret. 
or hear about the day that the heavy metal community will never forget in the episode Dimebag. These episodes are just a sample of our catalog, so you have plenty to binge. Just search for True Crime Fan Club Podcast and any podcatcher. You won't want to miss an episode.